Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Steve with LRM. Today we're going to talk about how to replace a def pump and some of the signs that we see when we need to replace a def pump or maybe just the filter. Today I have a Freightliner Cascadia up in the air. I'm going to make life a little bit easier for me, but we're going to go through some steps and what you need to do to uh, replace the def pump. Before we get started, guys, I need you not to forget to pound those like buttons when you like the videos that you see. Also, if you have any questions or any concerns, or something you want to see something new, leave a comment at the bottom. And if you want to save money and learn about new stuff coming out each, each month, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe. All right guys, so I have a 2020 that's up in the air and we're going to talk about the def pump. So there's going to be a few, a few tools that we're going to need. One, a crescent wrench. Two, a ratchet uh, with a 13 millimeter, as well as your um, 13 millimeter wrench. And you're going to need a flathead screwdriver. Also, Guys, you're gonna have to grab at least three buckets, five gallons, because we're gonna have to drain the coolant. So the first step we're gonna do is safety first, right? We're gonna chalk those tires uh, easily. As you guys can see, I don't have to worry about it because it's up in the air for me, but for you guys, chalk those tires. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the radiator portion and grab your crescent wrench. So let's hop right on over. All right, guys, so right now I'm aware the radiator is, right? If you see that there's like a little pitcock, it's usually pointing towards the motor or it could be on the driver's side, but right here on this freight liner, this is where you're gonna use your crescent wrench to grab a hold of it, right? And all you do is, like I've always told you, you know, lefty loosey, righty tighty, just slowly crack it open, and then you'll see coolant coming out. Now, if you want the coolant to come out quicker, right, open up the hood and remove the radiator cap, and then it'll start pouring out. Now, here's the other two things that you guys might run across a little bit of an issue, trying to get the five gallon bucket in, right? You can do two options. One, remove the bumper or two, drive your truck like on some plywood, uh, some planks of wood to get up some height or some ramps. Just remember to be safe that it's secure and it's not gonna fall. And then slide your five gallon buckets in and then start draining. And as you can see, you know, you can control the flow. So just keep opening it until you feel comfortable where it's not gonna make much of a mess and just start washing your buckets and start replacing them. You're gonna need at least three five gallon buckets and just swap them out. You guys, you can get those anywhere, you know, from Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, uh, you know, Northern, uh, Harbor Freight. You guys get the idea. Or some buckets that someone's throwing away. So that's what you do. Open up here, we'll let the coolant come out completely. You're gonna fill up three buckets, and then, um, then we're gonna move on to the def pump. All right, so let's move over to there. All right, guys, so now I'm near the def pump, right? This is your def pump, and this is a, a shield that, you know, blocked from the road debris, you know, for the most part, should, right? And this is located right behind the def tank. So there's three bolts, two on one side and one on the other. And this is where you're gonna need your 13 millimeter socket and ratchet. Um, if you guys have a uh, normal electric ratchet, you can. I just like to do it by hand, just so I know that if it's gonna have any tension, it's gonna have any issues um, and avoid cross threading. So what I'm gonna do is just take these three bolts out so you can see what I'm looking at. All right, so once you get the shield off, let's talk about the shield, right? One, it's supposed to protect it from road debris when it hits, you know, rocks, things like that. Um, you know, obviously if it's something bigger or something that's gonna take it out, it is kind of still a little flimsy, so keep that in mind. But here's another thing is when you get underneath the truck, sometimes you'll see a buildup of white crystallization. That's def fluid leaking. And that's a good indication that one or two things are happening, right? Because this is your def pump. The most common areas for this def pump to be leaking will be right here. Oh, let me pull this up a little. Right here, around this purge valve, uh, this um, it exhausts air, but sometimes it'll come out and start leaking here. Or the cap, right? From here and down, that is your def filter. So sometimes, because people forget that you need to replace this so, every so often, and this starts to split. So you can get away with just replacing the filter, all right? Sometimes the shop will say you need to do a whole one. So that's not the case. If this is split, just replace the filter. Now, if it's covered in, um, you know, dead fluid, you know, look, white crystallization, warm water, all right? I've talked about that in the, my few videos to remove uh, def. Just pour warm water on it, clean it, dry it, run the truck, and then see where it might be leaking. If it's here, replace the filter. If it's up here, then you're replacing a pump. You have two lines, 
All right, these two, the black lines, this is coolant. That's the whole point of draining the coolant out of your truck. The other side, the two blue lines, which you see here and here, that's your def fluid, all right? It goes to the tank and then it goes over to your one box to the uh, def dozer unit. So if you notice that there's no real wrenches on them, there's little clips. So this is where two things, right? Once the coolant is completely out, this is where you use your flathead screwdriver like this, and you're gonna pop this little tab down. Now you can remove it completely, or you can just get it sitting in one spot. But once you do that, I'm not gonna do it because coolant can come out. You put your, your uh, flathead screwdriver and pry just a little. Just remember guys, it's made out of plastic. So if you pry too hard and you break the plastic, you're replacing it. Same thing right here, all right? So it's the same thing on the coolant side. Now on the dev side, the blue lines, you have these two white, right? All you're gonna do is take your finger and pinch them together, all right? Once you do that, you're gonna wiggle and you see how easy it came off? So I did take this off just because there shouldn't be any def except for maybe a few trickles, but that's how easy it is. And then you slide it on and you listen to a click. Then the other thing is you have a plug right up here. And again, this is where you're gonna use your screwdriver. Get at an angle, all right? And slowly wiggle it down. You're gonna see it come out. Just remember you have road debris all on it. You have salt from it. Just wiggle and work it free. And once it comes off, there you go. See, this is off. Considering we're not doing a complete, you know, replacing it, cause this, uh, nothing wrong with this def pump. As you guys remember, coolant's out, pop these clips, remove the coolant lines off to the side, push the white tabs together, and then work them and slide them off. Then the last thing is your electrical plug, right? You're gonna use a flathead, wiggle it around, and just get it out. And then the last thing is, there are two bolts on the back side of this plate, and this is where a 13 millimeter wrench will come in handy. So I have a ratchet one, which I, you're not gonna get in there. <laughs> you guys thought it was gonna be that easy. You're gonna have to just put your wrench behind it and then start working at it, all right? It's gonna come pretty easy. All you're gonna do is those bolts should stay put right there. And then when you put the new one in, then you slowly work it on. And that's how easy this def pump is to replace. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, we're as you guys can see, we're, I'm gonna put the shield back up. Please put it back up. Do not just leave it off. It's meant there for a reason. It's to protect it from any road debris because guys, this is plastic, all right? So we'll put the shield back up and then I'm gonna show you what the def pump looks like here in a second because there's a few things you guys gotta do before installing it on the truck. If you guys remember, I started with my hand, a few threads so we don't get any cross threading. That's all you gotta do is cross thread one by accident, just trying to get through the end of the day just to fix what you made a mistake of. And you remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. All right, so now we got the shield on, pumps back on. Now you guys know that the coolant lines were reconnected, the def line's connected, and you got the plug back in. Now what you can do is put the coolant back in the truck, run it, and then try, if the truck doesn't need it, because uh, you know uh, you just replaced the pump, but if it doesn't need to do regen, then you probably can't do a force regen. But there's a most likely possibility that you have to do one anyway because the def pump is leaking. That was the whole point. And it may have a fault code for def pump, like pressure or not uh, def quality. And it's because it's leaking. Then you, once you do that, force it into a regen through the toggle switches and then watch. Make sure you don't have anything dripping. This you're gonna clean off, right? With warm water. And then while it's doing a regen, just just periodically check, make sure it's not leaking. Then you know that you connected your lines correctly. So you're gonna be checking for def as well as coolant. All right, guys, so let's hop over to the new pump so I can talk about what you need to do before installing it. All right, guys, so before we install the new pump on the truck, right, there's things that you need to do. So I have my new pump here, right? It comes with a yellow tag. It tells you what you need to do. It's very simple. So on this side, right, where you see it's where it's silver and the other side is black, right? Uh, I'll get a close up. So this side is where def fluid goes in. And what you're gonna do is fill this up, believe it or not, with water, right? Clean water, not dirty. And you're gonna put it through this side and then push 200 cc's 
through, and then you're gonna take your air gun and blow a little air through it. One, to clean it out, two, to pressurize it a little bit. And then you're gonna install it. It's not that hard, it's very easy. Now, the other thing we could talk about is almost 90% of the time, you don't have to do the priming portion on a computer. We've been connecting these with no issues, and maybe once in a very blue moon, I actually have to use a computer to a, do a, a priming. So if you know a mechanic that you know and like, and he has the software to do the priming portion through his computer, have him do it for you. If not, at least you can install it, run to a shop and say, hey, I just need you to do the priming portion. But there's a good chance that you don't have to do it. I've done it several times, installed it, everything cleared out, did a park regen, everything went away. So just keep that in mind. And we're gonna talk about one more time, right? The common places where the leaks would be here, the cracked plastic here, and then sometimes your depth lines. So just clean it with warm water and verify where it's leaking before you do it. Cause this is a lot, this is a little bit more expensive compared to just replacing the filter or the coolant lines. I mean the depth lines. So keep that in mind, all right? Just verify before replacing. I've had people say, I need a, a def pump, and it was just a def line. Or they said, I need a def pump, and the plastic was cracked, replace the filter. So just to give you an idea, the pump itself is about anywhere 900 to 1200 bucks. The filter itself is anywhere between 100 to 200 bucks, and the def line can range from 30 to $70, depending which one you need. If you remember my KISS method, you know, keep it simple and stupid, <laughs> but uh, clean it, verify it so you can think that it's gonna be the most cost-effective way. You don't wanna just throw parts at it and see what fixes it. So warm water, run it, let's see where it's leaking from before replacing. And that's it. All right guys, a quick recap. Just remember some of the tools that we're gonna need, right? A 13 millimeter socket with a ratchet, a 13 millimeter wrench, as well as a flathead screwdriver and three buckets, sorry, three buckets of five gallons so we can drain that coolant. If you guys saw what you liked today, don't forget to pound that like button. If you have any questions or concerns of what you saw, guys, leave a comment at the bottom. And if you want to save money and get more content coming your way, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys around at the next video.